How's it going guys? At the farm again and we are almost done all my conversions from open air rigs to server cases and so I found cases for the majority of my boards but I do have six boards that are a little different, a little more rare. Um, not rare like you can't go buy one but like they're just not as common to be used. Um, and I really would want to find server cases for them because these two boards have some of the biggest spacing in the industry. But for some reason, they never really took off uh, as mining boards. They're not super popular. Um, but yeah, I got four of this ASRock H510 Pro BTC Plus. And I have two of this is a later revision of that five GPU board. So there's been multiple revisions. There's the beat. So the other ones you saw in the prior video, those are the BTC 79 X5. That was version one. And then there was a second one, which the biggest complaint of that first one was the spacing. It's only 60 millimeters. A lot of people have gotten used to 65 millimeters on riser list boards. So there is a 65 millimeter version uh, and they changed the name completely. They called it uh, the ETH, uh, I'm gonna get this wrong, ETH 79 dash x5 okay so that that was kind of the middle one and uh that one's distinguishable it would have this same black uh rather than the brown of the version one it has this uh black finish but the riser plugs themselves are blue and last but not least there's this one one with green slots and this guy i really really want to find a case for so this is as you can see the eth 79 x5b so just one last letter on there otherwise it's the same as the 65 millimeter blue spacing one but this has a massive 80 millimeter spacing between gpus which is just absolutely unheard of um essentially this was designed for your 3090s for and all your 40 series where the you know <laughs> the coolers have just gotten way out of hand so I have two of these boards. I've never used them, um, and but I bought them hoping to someday find a case for them. I got them real cheap, uh, bottom of the bear market. They're still pretty cheap. I'll put a link down below to, to both these boards, actually. Um, you can still easily find either of these. So yeah, but these are not normal, um, like, mass mining farms to have. Uh, this one probably because of, you know, you know, it's just five GPUs. Um, of course, the very first version was very popular and that has smaller spacing and it kind of made sense because it was for the 3060, which generally didn't have giant coolers. Um, but it is still nice because it has X8 capability for all these slots. I mean, yes, the slots are X16 in length, but typically um, you know, they're X1 on a riser board. These are all X8, which could be, like I said, for the other similar board, could be an interesting, perfectly useful workplace. Now, on this board, uh, this spacing is not quite as big. It's not 80 millimeters, but this is 70 millimeters, which again, still a lot bigger than a typical riser this board. All your B85s, B75s, so it was all 65 millimeter. So 70 is really nice. Um, so I have four of these as rock boards. I uh, have a prior video linked down below to how to actually set these up. You want to make sure if you do get one of these to make sure you update to the latest BIOS or else you will not get six cards working. You only get one. Um, on this board, this is uh, will not be a proof of useful work play at all. This is strictly, I want to find server cases for this just so because uh, over time, I assume coolers will only get bigger. So um, good versatility to be able to have larger GPUs. Uh, but it won't be good for proof of useful work because... Well, it only has one slot that is more than PCIe X1. So um, the bottom five slots on this board are all X1 only. That's it. That's all. You can look it up on their specs on their website. That's all they are. This one's an X16, but the rest, all X1. So not going to be doing any proof of useful work on this board, unlike that one, which maybe could. And um, that's going to be a future video. But essentially, I found that uh, even though there's only one slot, since these are server CPUs, and a server motherboard. Um, you can use ECC memory. So even though DDR3 uh, was pretty much capped at 16 gigabytes, if you use server memory, you can get up to 64 gigabytes. So it makes it a little more uh, 
I think that'll be an interesting test later. Uh, but yeah, for this one, definitely never going to be fruits of use of work. But I like the idea of larger spacing. So, need to find server cases for both these. Uh, definitely not easy um, because A, like I said, uh, they're not highly used, at, especially at like a large farm level. Um, and B, well, they both kind of came out at the end of the bull run, so there wasn't much incentive to make server cases for them. Uh, but I did find at least server cases for one of these. I'm not. I'm gonna let you guys, you know, guess which one you think it is. But I was able to find some server cases. Uh, hopefully, so we're gonna break those out, see which one of these fits, uh, and then I'll just have one board left that I need to try and find a case for. But my conversion, we're getting close. All right, so got the instructions here, a bunch of screws. Uh, these instructions kind of look like, if you ask me, about the same detail level aesthetic as IKEA. And maybe that's a hint to, to where these come from. So um, they are from a company called Mining Clips. Let's uh, find a picture. There we go, it's upside down. Uh, they are out of Sweden. And they make the one and only case for the ASRock H510 Pro BTC Plus. No other manufacturer on this planet that I know of or can find anywhere makes a case for that board. Except them. It's a link down below. Um, yeah, and honestly, it looks really cool. I'm, I'm excited to get it unpacked for you guys. Let's get it together on the table. So, this case it's huge <laughs> i mean i know i got other stuff on this table i really need to like well that's the test bench so it's always gonna stay uh, that really needs to be moved and dealt with but this thing is massive i mean it is a big board to start with um just because of the spacing but um so essentially what they've done they put this little shelf here where you can bolt in uh, your PSUs because this board, uh, if you uh, have this board or watch my video on it, uh, does take only ATX power supplies and multiple. Um, so you would need one on both sides essentially. And then the wires would go in through the handles, I assume. Um, but that makes it have this extra wide footprint. But it is nice that that way, if you do lift it, you know, it's going to lift up those PSUs uh, with it. You can see we got the board in here. It is a little, the instructions are kind of fuzzy on what side of, you know, should this panel be on the front or on the inside, so on and so forth. So definitely recommend looking at the close-up pictures on their website um, for all these corner conditions. Uh, it's really the only way to know if you're doing it right. I do like the little logo there. Uh, but this is really nice. I mean, it's a matte, um, matte metallic blue it's a really interesting color um honestly it's the coolest color i've ever seen for a case even cooler than like matte black um so we're gonna throw in the board and make sure everything lines up it looks like it comes with um all the screws to obviously put the case together um it comes with standoffs for the motherboard there's 14 standoffs on the h510 pro btc plus um and it looks like it comes with uh, mounting screws for um, the motherboard, but uh, no screws, it seems, for the actual GPUs, but you can see the six GPUs holes here. Um, double check that. Four, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, so there's 14 there, so that's 14 for these 14. So yeah, um, you'll have to make sure to have some GPU mounting screws. I'm not sure what size hole these are, um, but probably standard size um, it doesn't this case also doesn't come with fans but you can see that it uses five fans uh, which you would obviously won't want to do intake and then it would blow all the hot air out uh, since the GPUs will be mounted this way and if you have blowers or anything like that that's the way you want it to go um, again I'm just setting I'm just I'm not planning to get these up and running today or anything I'm just you know trying to uh, put all the boards in these cases put these cases on the shelves and uh, you know, just get that part done for now. Um, so yeah, let's uh, 
grab the board, which is right now way up there, and we're gonna throw it in here. Guys, I don't think I've seen a roomier case in my life. Like, holy cow. The amount of room in here. I mean, this is so future-proof for the largest graphics cards ever, it's not even fun. <laughs> I mean, this is just huge. Even once I put the fans in here, like, say I throw a 35 millimeter fan, like, it, there is just so much room. And there's extra room on this side. So I didn't know this when I bought it. I thought, um, you know, it would be limited to just the six. So there is this mining riser port on these boards. So you can technically have seven. No, you cannot put like a USB splitter or something like that. It, this port will only accept a single PCIe X1 riser. Um, but they left a slot for it. So that's really awesome. Uh, you can see the two holes here to mount the GPU in this slot. So you can actually get seven cards on here. So I thought these were all gonna be six card rigs and they're actually gonna be seven card, which is awesome. Um, and actually kind of similar, here I'll grab uh, what I had custom made. So this is my old rig when it was open air. And you can see that I had put like, this is where the board ended. I had put like a little plexiglass for the riser card to just sit next to all the others. So these were all seven card open air rigs. So it's really awesome that they left a ton of room so you can actually, and the mount, mounting holes, so you can still actually run seven cards on this thing. So I thought I was kind of giving that up in exchange uh, for putting it in a server case, but no. I'm not. So this is how it fits. Uh, like I said, tons of room. I mean, look at all that real estate. Um, and then this is where your I.O. ports will be. So I'm uh, I'm going to put the lid on this thing, uh, box it up for today. That's all I'm doing. Um, so once we get the lid on, we'll take a final look at it. Uh, final little thoughts on this case for now. Um, again, not planning to get these rigs up and running anytime soon. Uh, but, you know, just starting the process. So be right back once I get the lid on. Um, oddly, I guess I should say this. So I did screw all these corners together just to help, because uh, all the panels are individual and separate, uh, to help it from essentially falling apart. Uh, but uh, you, to put the lid on, you'll actually have to take out the top screw if you did the same process as I did. So just something to note there. Oh, and, uh, and one last thing before I button it up. It does actually come with a reset button or power switch, depending on what one you want. I typically put it on the reset button uh, rather than power. Uh, that way, if it's like completely uh, locked up your system, you know, you can still reset it. Um, but they give you a pretty long uh, option. And I guess you can kind of put whatever, like, you know, you could just have it dangle out the side here or uh, use their little logo here if you really want. Um, just have it sit there. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, kind of wish they put like an actual spot for it, but you know, whatever. Some people might not even use this, um, but it is nice that they do provide that for you because um, the actual H510 board, if you don't recall, has the buttons on it way over here, power and reset, which are pretty much inaccessible uh, in a case. Um, obviously open air, that's not an issue, but in a case that's an issue, uh, and there is a panel header. So, um, it is nice they give you the button at least, so, uh, that's a way to resolve that. But yeah, we're gonna get the lid on here, and then, uh, some final thoughts. And there she is, all together. Like I said, guys, this thing is massive, but super tall, tons of space inside. Your biggest GPUs ever could fit in this thing. So that's awesome. Uh, looks great. This dark matte metallic blue. I mean, it's a cool case. Uh, I don't know why they're the only person, company that ever made one for the H510 uh, Pro, BTC Pro Plus, whatever you want to call it from ASRock. Um, but yeah, definitely a cool case. Only gripe, to be honest. It, well, two. The packaging job, uh, it, be, it ended up being fine. There's no scratches or anything, which is surprising because uh, you can kind of see how mangled these boxes got. Like, there's literally, like, the packing inside has just deteriorated to the point that everything slid to the bottom. Uh, so maybe a better packing job. 
Um, and better instructions. I'll be honest, the instructions really suck. So definitely uh, use the pictures on their website to try and figure out what order all the panels in the corners have to go. Um, some of them, you'll have, it is a little difficult to put together just because you know, they're all free pieces that want to fall over. Uh, but once you get a couple together, then it becomes a lot easier. But yeah, overall, I uh, love that I finally found a board for my ASRock H510 Pro BTC Plus boards. I, and it allows for that 7th GPU, so that's really awesome. Uh, really excited about these gates. It's got three more for the other uh, three of these boards I got. Um, so I'm just going to put those all together and put these on the racks. Um, just empty for now until I get to them in the future. Uh, but yeah, so let me know your thoughts. Like, have you ever thought about putting your H510 Pro B BTC Plus ASRock boards in a case? Uh, link down below to where I found this case. Again, I don't believe there's any other cases out there for this board. So if you've ever thought about it, hit up Mine Equips over in Sweden. They will hook you up. I don't have any referral code or anything like that. I don't even think they're big enough to do that stuff. But hey, if you ever thought about one, they have some. Uh, last one I talked with them, uh, they had, I think, 26 left in stock, maybe 27. Um, and I don't know if they're ever going to make any more. Again, this, this board came out kind of mid bull run. Uh, they came out with this case kind of mid bull run. I, I just don't know if it's really something that there's enough demand for. So if you've been thinking about it, definitely get it before you can't. Um, but yeah, a really good quality case. I just really like it. So yeah, comment down below, uh, like, subscribe, and that's all I got today on my continuing conversion of open air rigs to server cases. Until next time.